What you got there, Fred? Cinnamon, cinnamon teal. Not native to Canada. So come far as the Great Lakes. So they're only teal that carries the blue under the wing as well as on top of the wing. And uh, the hen, the hen one the same way. That's she, the female, right? The female has the blue under her wings. Now the green wing teal and the blue wing teal only have the blue on the back of the wing. They don't have it under the, under the wing. And the band is just a band that I've gathered up over the years off of different ducks and stuff I've killed, but I put it on there for a little bit of character to make it, you know, to make it look good. But that's what these are, cinnamon teal. I'll hang those back up. Male kingfisher, which everybody comes in, don't seem to notice, but myself, I think it was one of my best works on a smaller bird with his facial, his facial display and stuff. And his eyes, and that, that, that is drawn out on tin, cut out with tin snaps put together with a glue gun and painted by hand. There's no patterns or nothing. It's all done by hand, every drop of him. And that's for sale? And that's for sale. I've got, what have I got on that now? You can imagine what I'm gonna make off of that bird. I got a $35, $35 tag on this little kingfisher. And if any other artist would do something like that, it would probably be a couple more cerros behind it, about 350 bucks. And I ain't had a jet, people. So I just want to get my work out there. So that's only like 50 cents an hour. Yeah, it would probably, that'd be what he would come to, 50 cents an hour. But like me with the corals. Though. Or something like that. Now, if I can get him hung back up. My wives ain't what they used to be. Oh, I'll let him hang that way. And these two here, we've got the primer paint on them, they're going to be harlequin ducks. The he and the she one, the she one will be under the he one, same as the cinnamon teal. When those are done, that's probably be another week or so before I get at those. And in the window over here, I have got, these two will be cardinals, same, same idea, the he one, the top bird, the bright red cardinal, the he one, and the she one is more of a drab brown and reddish color, she'd be hanging five or six inches underneath his belly, look like a pair of them coming in to a feeder the same time, but I have to cut them out and put a couple coats of primer on them to get them ready for the painting. And this will be a northern northern goshawk when he's finished. Very, very pretty bird. Similar to the peregrine falcon in colors. About the same size as a peregrine but with longer legs. Northern goshawk. He's a Slate gray back, slate grayish bluish back, very pretty colors on him. So that should make a nice hawk mounted on a piece of piece of driftwood to put up on your wall to a cottage or your house or anything. And now I've started my barred owl. He's one of the very few owl species that has black eyes. The rest have bright penetrating yellowish orange his eyes but this little owl here barred owl has deep coal black eyes it's going to be a very very pretty bird I've only got his head started on him right now but he's going to be a beautiful bird when he's done going to be I'd say at least 10-12 more hours of painting on that bird to finish him These here are two harlequin ducks. We call them rock ducks in this area. 
and they've been known to be called sea mice because of the squeaks they make. Seal Island in the winter months there's great flocks of them sits around the west side of Seal Island that's where they winter along the shoreline in the summer months they're in the fast rapids and rivers eating nymphs and stuff and the species is almost wiped out they blamed it on hunting but when uh, biologists and stuff studied the bones they discovered that where they live in that rapids and they feed in that fast rapids they was fracturing getting smashed up against the rocks underwater they was killing themselves by getting beat up they never see so many fractures and broken bones in a bird in their life because of where they feed and live in the fast rapid water and the great lakes and stuff so but the species is making a comeback now they're, they're protected species you're not allowed to hunt them heavy fine if you get caught get caught with one So I wanted to do a pair of them. That's that's my wife's favorite right there. She likes those the best of the of the ducks that I've mounted on driftwood. And uh, they're pretty, but I'm uh, the pair I showed you up there that I'm going to do with the wings on them are, are going to be a very pretty set of birds too. And here on the wall, I have. If I can pronounce it right, it's F U R R I O U N S, Ferganus Hawk. It's called. Very pretty hawk. Large feet, claws, bright colors on it. I finished him about a week or so ago. Mount him on a piece of seal on him. Seal Island Driftwood washes the shore and dries on the shore. Gives it that character. And in the middle is a little saw wet, saw wet owl mounted on a piece of driftwood. Actually come from the valley. One of my uh, customers brought it down. Found it up there duck hunting. Said I might be able to use it to mount something on it. So that piece of driftwood come from up around Naples Royal somewhere. And the other hawk, which is a favorite of Michael Ross's, he already bought a snow owl from me, but he's got his eye on that rough-legged hawk. He wants that too for his cottage in Seal Island. The other hawk over there, mounted on a piece of driftwood. He, he uh, really likes that hawk. He, he tried to talk his wife into letting him buy it the other day when he was here and got his snow owl, but she said, ah, wait, he might make something else that you like better. So he doesn't see this one here or my snow owl I'm doing so what about one of your flying decoys the flying decoys well that's what you're famous for isn't it that's what I started the business out about four years ago I wanted to design a decoy with spinning wings on it so I fooled around for about two weeks and this is what I come up with Probably one of my first works, you can tell it's pretty pretty roughly done, but it does its job, it'll do toy ducks. And I went with it down to the road to see if I could sell it. And Margot said, my wife said, if you take that down there and embarrass me, I'll be packing my bags up and leaving. I said, well, it probably won't even sell. That evening I had 60 orders for flying wing decoys. I notice she don't holler now when I go down to the road with a bunch of them at 40, 50 bucks a piece. She keeps asking, how many have you got ready to take down to the road now? I said, well, I got a few. But the wings, they have to, they'll position themselves into the wind. You put them out with your other decoys and it looks like a wild bird, a wild duck coming in to land with your regular decoys. And I think it really helps, really helps tall ducks. How long does it take to make one? One of these, if you get your plywood all cut out, you're probably looking at a couple hours work. It's according to how fancy you want to be. I, I sell them according to how fancy the guys want them. If they want a fancy job, I'll put the slits in the wings to make it look like a real wing, but it's going to cost you 10 bucks more, you know what I mean? If I sold this bird for 30 bucks, just a rough decoy, 
If you want a fancy looking one, he's going to cost you an extra 10 bucks. I'm going to jump it up to 40 bucks for the extra work I have to do to do the, the painting and, and the whole deal. Work good? They work lovely. I've had mallards gone out to the west coast. I've got goose decoys I've made, flying goose decoys as PEI in northern Ontario. There's been some gone to Maine, so I've been getting around everywhere. I do mallards, black ducks, sea ducks, surf scooters, teal, every duck that a hunter would go after, bluebills, whistlers, I have made. so. But that's what he started from, just a rough, rough estimate like of what I thought they should look like. Now I was quite satisfied with that when I made it. I thought I'd done a real nice job. If I could paint that same bird over the day, he would look ten times better because my painting, my painting has got that much better. But it's like anything, that's where you gotta start. Now, to get that hang back up there with my old shaky hands. The wood ducks, that's probably one of the biggest sellers that I could I could make. But they're very, very hard bird to paint. Both birds, the the the, the drake and the duck. The drake especially has a lot of blues and greens and rusty colors and purples and reddish colors and it's a fluorescent color. Yes, it's a hard bird to paint to do a real nice job, but I wanted I've done some flying wing ones for people, but I wanted to do a pair sitting on a nice piece of Seal Island driftwood. You ain't only getting a pair of wood ducks, you're also getting a part of history because God knows we'll have a a bald eagle sitting on the arm. Claws are sharp too. Friend of mine, the Clark Harbor, uh, works in a machine shop. Said he always loved bald eagles. He liked to have something made to put over his goldfish pond and keep predators out of his goldfish pond. So he don't even know I've got it made for him yet. But it's for Dougie Peterson, the Clark Harbor. He got a large goldfish pond, and he's going to put this up on a pole by his goldfish pond and. Hope to keep the kingfishers and fish hawks out. So I'm going to surprise him one of these days. I'm going to go down and say, I got a bald eagle for you, Dougie. And see how he thinks of that. But that was a lot of work. That's a half a sheet of plywood put into that bird. His wings are separate, his legs, his tail, and every feather and every stripe on that bird was painted by hand. It took a long time to paint that bird. And it's a job to get the both sides, both sides the same. So that's my bald eagle. I always wanted to do a bald eagle. I'm going to do another one this summer with the spinning wings on it and a full size Atlantic salmon in his claws for the Whirly Gig Festival in Shelburne this year. What, what does that little thing hang in there? It's not Ooh. painted yet. This here? It's going to be a chickadee when he's done. Chickadee. I wanted to try and make a little chickadee. Now, i got to find a different place to hang the bald eagle because my nail just pulled out. Good thing it. So. <laughs> uh oh. I guess I'll just hang him right here for now. And I'll replace that nail this evening. Now. Over here, if I can lift it, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody buys that, that's come with a ton truck. Because the rock weighs just a ton. Now that is a granite puffins. The male coming in the land on this rock with three little uh, sand lamps in his mouth. And the female is standing on the rock. I think Charles Kenny the harbor is going to be interested in this, putting his cottage on Seal Island. He he was asking if I had uh, any Atlantic puffins over here. So, so I done a pair of Atlantic puffins. They're a pretty little bird. They have pretty bills on them and full mating colors and stuff. 
and everything I do I try to find the overhaul length Atlantic puffing is 12 inches long and I try to cut my tin out to that to that length and try to keep everything the size it's supposed to be yep. ain't that heavy and this is what I'm working on now this is going to be a full size snow owl a male a male has very very other very few other colors on him than pure white the female has a lot of black bars and stripes on her feathers for nesting on the tundra but the, the male is pretty well all white so I've got his wings and stuff bent to make it look it make it look like he's coming in to strike a mouse or a lemon so I still got to do his wings and his back but he's got those, he's got those pairs in eyes, like he's locked in on a mouse or a lemon. But once I get him done, he should look quite nice. But I got a lot of work, at least three or four full days of painting left to do on that bird. Yeah, but it's going to be worth it when I get him done. This over here, even though it's not finished is uh, one of my full-size Canada Goose decoys which goes on a, a stand usually a tent pole people use to mount him on for putting out amongst their other goose decoys I had guys buy them, take them to Prince Edward Island in different places say they work good they have full-size spinning wings on them when he's all painted this is for an old retired hunter in Ridgeport Carl Cutrow was going to buy it for him. He's retired from duck hunting now. He's got all of his guns and decoys in his basement in a room. And Carl's going to buy him this goose decoy when it's done. He can give it to him just for a, for a keepsake to hang down in his rec room in his basement. So, But he's no hurry for it. He said whenever I get it finished, we'll give him a call. So, But it's not no big deal. Like I could probably finish this bird a couple days. Do the rest of the painting on him, put the wings on him. Couple days work. Couple days, just a couple days for these other projects. Yep. So you got a lot of days ahead. Right, if I got that many days, who knows how many days you got. What's That's my plans anyway. What's that tree over there? Yep, I'm gonna get him, i get this here back in place and my, my puffing straightened back up. Worst about 10, it's quite, quite flimsy. Now, this little tree is one of my first works I ever done with small birds. I said I'd like to take an old branch of a tree and put some different color birds on it. So, that's what I come with. This, these are artificial berries. I tried the real berries, varnishing them, but they would just shrivel up and fall off. So, I got some artificial rosebuds. So I started off down here with a hairy woodpecker on the base of the tree picking as though he was looking for grubs then I put a little brown bellied nuthatch they, they feed going the opposite way on a tree most birds go up the tree looking for bugs this little nuthatch will go down the tree trying to get stuff that the other birds missed then I have got a indigo indigo grosbeak or blue grosbeak whatever they want to call them on this side on the other side is the yellow grosbeak same family I guess just different different colored bird then above him is the evening grosbeak on the branch above the yellow grosbeak Then two chickadees out on the end of the branch after those little rosebuds. Then the cardinal sitting up here by himself. One of the prettiest birds I'm concerned there is. The, the cardinal. And to the very top I've got a little small golden crown kinglet it's called. 
You see them around with the chickadees and the one eye and the spruce and pine trees. Very pretty little bird. So that is about one of my one of my first works I ever done on small birds. I've done a lot of birds since, but some hummingbird trees and stuff. But I'm going to tackle some more. I'd like to do a tree that somebody told me what they wanted put it on it. You know what kind of birds they like. And I'd like to do a tree that way. Well, I want so many chickadees. I want so many. Cardinals and, and Baltimore Orioles and you know different different things. This is just what I made It's what I wanted on it, but I'd rather do a tree that somebody wants me to do one for them and uh, What birds they want put on it, but I'm pleased with it. It looks nice Something different anyway. Yep. Thanks a lot Fred Thanks a lot